All right, guys, something different today. Today we're at Stu's Motorcycles, downtown Fort Lauderdale, and we're test driving some Indians. So the first bike I'm hopping on is the new Indian Sport Chief. So, the new Indian Sport Chief. Really, really nice. Um, controls are a little different on here. You've got your on and off and your start. Um, cruise control is on the right side. On the left side is your turn signals. Um, similar to how uh, sport bikes have it. Um, some radio controls here. Looks like uh, up and down on the screens. Uh, there I, you see I can change the speedo uh, Music your horn high beam low beam Mid controls on this guy uh, air clears on the left Not that that makes a big deal, but again, it's just a little different. I can tell you at 5'9 uh, I am flat-footed and the bars are at a really good um, Height I would say this is probably maybe an 8 inch riser and you probably get an additional inch or two pullback from the bars. Teardrop mirrors, they look okay. Probably something I would swap if I had one of these. Uh, other than that, I mean the tech is real nice. Very smooth motorcycle inverted forks on the front. You do get the Fox Shocks in the rear With the external reservoir, I believe So as far as right out the box, you know bang for your buck compared to a Harley It, it definitely looks like you get a lot more um, You know these things are faster than Harley's from stock if that's important to you um, But between the, the forks the suspension, the tech technology, and the speedo connecting your phone to it, and and GPS and all that, um, you, you you get the fairing stock. Definitely a better bang for your buck, in my opinion. You are pitched slightly more forward than you are on my uh, my street bob, and the clutch is extremely soft. Mid controls are in a nice position. Got to get used to the turning signals. Need to get this bad boy on some open road. But yeah, I mean, it definitely... The ergos, the rider triangle, if you will, is... um. It's good. For, for my stature, it's good. Um, my knees are, I would say, less than 90 degrees. I'm not completely high up on the mid-controls, which is probably good news for you longer leg riders.
but you get a lot of good information here rpm ambient temperature mileage gear fuel ratio time um, done really nice not overcrowded um, clear easy to read Good acceleration. I am not a fan of group rides. I'm sorry. Not not in the test drive setting. That's just me, but you know, getting on a bunch of bikes that most people haven't had time with and people that you don't know their riding style or, or skill level. Um, yeah. But it is what it is, and for science, this is why we're here. There's my boy, test driving the Indian FTR 1200. I'm gonna have to sit on that one next. But uh, seat wise, the seat is comfortable. I can tell the suspension is a little soft in the rear, um, but if I'm not mistaken, you can dial that in. Fit and finish is nice. Height wise, I'd say it's right about where my street bob is. At least that's the way it feels like. It could be a little higher, and then the suspension being as soft as it is, very pliable um, stock suspension on my street bob is uh, a little firmer. You know, I definitely can't compete with dual Fox shocks. I give it that. We can get into all the actual specs later. I'll I'll post all that up. But uh, if you don't know, the Sport Chief does come with their 116. I don't know the horsepower torque numbers off the top of my head, but like I said, we'll put that up. If we can get past these uh, red light runs, uh, I'd like to see what it does like without stopping. Weight wise, feels about the same, you know, very comparable to a soft tail. I will say this, the number one thing I notice right now is how soft the clutch is. This clutch, you can hold this in all day, there's nothing there. The levers are wide, comfortable.
Very smooth bike. I think in my initial uh, thoughts about the bike is, uh, like I said, if there's anything I don't like about it, it's the mirrors. But if you want a bike that doesn't need a lot done to it, that's comfortable out the gate, that has good power, good acceleration out the gate, this is definitely up there with those. This is definitely one worth considering. There's not a lot you have to change on here. I mean, it's all personal preference, but for what you get between the fairing, the risers, the bars, the speedo, uh, the engine, the, sh the suspension, uh, certainly a lot to like here. She's got a little pro to her too. Stock pipes are stock pipes, but it's not bad. And here you can see as we're going through the menus, there's all kinds of options here. You got your gauges. The bike itself. See some information on outside temperature, battery levels, uh, fuel economy, uh, how much range you have. Let's see what else we got. Uh, built in maps. Sync your phone. put this bad boy in sport mode so you also have three modes you have tour standard and sport not sure what that really adjusts I imagine the uh, the, the RPMs shift profile put the gauges back on all right I imagine the sport makes the throttle a little more twitchy. Uh, allows the power to hit the rear wheel a little, uh, a little more freely. Definitely pulls. And we can't win today. We cannot win. Well, I guess the other good thing about being on an Indian with their liquid cooled engines is that Downtown riding, light to light is, uh, you know, my legs are not on fire. And uh, it's 90 degrees outside, sunny South Florida, and I'm not dying. So there is heat, you know, again, you, you can't mitigate the, the exhaust, but uh, overall the bike is not incredibly uh, warm sitting at all these lights. Wow, that's definitely, you can definitely feel the difference in sport. Brakes are responsive.
Rear brakes work well, front brakes work well. Bike comes with Brembo brakes. So do Harleys. I mean, their, bike, their brakes are made by Brembo, but these are not OEM Indian Brembos. These are just straight Brembos, and they perform well. I mean, so far. Stock grips. I know if you've watched any of my other videos, my gripe with Harley stock grips. Uh, these have a little more play. I can squeeze them a little. Uh, so far, not a problem on my hands, but you know we haven't been riding that long. Everybody's itching to get past these lights. This is second gear. But you know what, at the end of the day, there's something about taking your time, thinking outside of whatever brand loyalty you have, if any, and uh, test driving the other bikes on the market, uh, regardless what it is, uh, an Indian, a Triumph, a Yamaha, um, test drive them all, even if you're not in the market, why not, why not see what else is out there, why not, uh, Increase your riding skills, learning how to ride different bikes with different setups. And, and overall getting a better understanding of what's out there for the kind of bike that you like. And what, you know, what the average price point is going to get you and you know, where your bang for the buck is between these different manufacturers. So, uh, you know if you've got a free afternoon and there's some demo rides going on or whatever go 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 hop on man it doesn't cost you anything you get to ride a brand new bike from whatever manufacturer is running it and uh you know it's different it's certainly help point out uh the shortcomings of your own motorcycle compared to what you're test driving or you know might even inspire you stylistically to put some aftermarket parts on if you like the way uh, you know a certain seat is or or uh, you know foot controls hand controls all that stuff yeah I, I like sport mode though definitely got some to her Obvious comparable Harley comparisons would be the Lowrider S. Um, I did get a chance to test ride the Lowrider ST and the Fat Bob together. Um, so if you haven't seen that video, you can go back and take a look. Uh, but in comparison to those, I mean the ST is a little different because of the fairing and the bags. So as far as you know, uh, cost comparison. Um, you, you do get those and you know those hard bags and and uh, a fairing compared to a windshield uh, you know you, you expect it to cost a little more than something without so um, but compared to the uh, the fat bob or even my street bob uh, it, it's it's right there I mean it, it's just as comfortable uh, th this is a great bike for Someone with a shorter inseam. 
and again, if it was me, uh, the only uh, things that I would be in a rush to change out, I know I'm repeating myself, is uh, the mirrors and the foot pegs. The rest, I think you can you can leave alone and you'd be very happy with it. Oh, this test driver took the most congested roads. Okay. Little PSA there for you guys. Now, as far as flavors or different ways this comes, um, one thing I noticed, there, there's another sport chief in the, the test fleet here that's got um, a higher windshield and I believe a higher set of risers. I don't know if that's a, an option when you purchase it or that's just, uh, they just threw on uh, whatever other parts they have on there, but uh, the windshield's probably about up to here, and the risers are probably about up to here, so maybe from a 8 to a 10, 10 inch riser, and a taller windshield. Uh, the fairing, I mean, unfortunately, we haven't been able to do enough riding uh, to really test, you know, how much wind blockage there is, but... You did it, bro! You Yeah. We, gang, 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 gang. we try. <laughs> All right, big Hey. A little sideways, but that's all right. Like I said, this sport mode is something else. If you're like me, you're probably not taking it out of sport mode. So with all of this, it bears the question, uh, would I pick this over my street, Bob? Um, stock for stock? I think so. I think I think you get more um, bang for your buck again. Stock for stock. Uh, you know, as far as what I've done to my bike so far, yeah, no. Nah. But that's just me. You know, you put uh, time, effort, and, and money into your bike, you make it yours, uh, uh, you definitely develop a, an attachment, at least I do, to it, so uh, there is a little bit of bias in that. Um, but still, I mean, even with uh, the, the amount of money I had to put into the street bob, um, between the Memphis Shades fairings, uh, the T-bars, um, yeah, I mean, you, you have to factor all those things into it. So, you know, may, maybe you're, you're, you're somebody who prefers to customize their own bike, 
pick their own parts a little more. Uh, or, or, you know, maybe you're just somebody who says, hey, man, you know, I, I, I don't want to upgrade my bike. I want to get the best bike with the most features uh, stock. Uh, that, that's what's important. Then, uh, it, you know, the, this Indian certainly has a leg up on Harley and other manufacturers in, in, in that aspect. So kudos to Indian for putting together a good package here. And like I said, uh, afterwards we'll uh, we'll put up the specs. But ultimately, you know, regardless of the numbers that you see on the internet, uh, it, you, you test drive. That's the only way. That's the only way. You know what I mean? We're all built different. We all prefer different things, and. You know, if you're chasing numbers on paper, that's one thing, but if you really want to know, test drive. So I pulled up the IndianMotorcycle.com page for the Sport Chief so we can talk about some of the features, prices, and compare it to its number one competitor being the Harley Lowrider S. Um, I'm just going to cover some of the more important features and differences, uh, you know, there's a ton of things in here that honestly don't mean anything to anyone, um, at least not as much as sitting on the two of them, test driving them, and and spending some time and figuring out which one feels the best to you. To me, that's the most important. So we'll just begin at the price. You're looking at a, a MSRP of eighteen nine ninety nine versus eighteen one ninety nine for the Lowrider S. We can. Scroll down to some of the specs here. So, uh, like I said earlier, rear suspension, the big difference between the two, um, the Sport Chief has the dual Fox piggyback rear shocks. Um, in my short time with it, they were very plush, very pliable, very comfortable. Uh, compared to the mono shock that comes with the Lowrider S stock. Now, if you were to go out and buy an aftermarket um, performance shock for your Harley, um, if we're you know for the soft tail line, you're you're, you're probably looking right around a thousand dollars for some of the top tier ones. Um, that comes stock, so you know if you're happy with the way your Lowrider S rides or your soft tail in general rides with the stock shock, more power to you. Um, but if you're trying to reach the, uh, the performance and comfort of what I see with the Sport Chief, you're going to have to come out of pocket a little bit. So um, both of them have inverted forks, 43 millimeter. Both of them have Brembo brakes, dual discs. Um, Harleys are Brembo OEM spec. Um, Sport Chief has um, Brembo labeled uh, uh, cal um, calibers. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, some of the other important features if, let's do dimensions seat height on both motorcycles is at 27 inches um, the lowrider S is a little bit longer so overall length you're looking at about a 3 inch difference or Two and a half. Um, the the weight the um, the Sport Chief is about six pounds heavier uh, at six eighty five running, where um, the running weight for the Lowrider S is listed at six ninety nine. Not something I think you'd be able to feel, um, but worth noting, especially given that. The fuel capacity for the Sport Chief is a whole gallon less than the fuel capacity for the Lowrider S. Uh, again, something to consider based on your riding style. Uh, if we're going to cover the engine real quick, the Sport Chief has the 116 cubic inch Thunderstroke. You're looking at 120 foot pounds of torque and around 122 horsepower, where the 
Lowrider S is 125 foot-pounds of torque, and I believe around 100 horsepower. And that's just going to fall into the differences of the engine technologies between the two. Um, but, again, um, something else to think about, if, if that matters to you based on your riding style. Um, to me, those are the most important things. Again, the Sport Chief, you'll get... Um, the fairing, you'll get T-bars, um, mid-controls, and you, you get the infotainment speedometer. With the Lowrider S, you get this small little, I wouldn't even call it a fairing, a little headlight cover. Um, yeah, and so if we scroll down to the features here, uh, standard equipment. Uh, both of them have ABS. Ride modes is specific to the Indian. Uh, key ignition, key fobs, USB ports. Um, and rear cylinder deactivation is also unique to the Sport Chief. So, again, for right around the same price, for a difference of, if we're talking MSRP, um, about 800 bucks, uh, you, you are getting more. It, um, you are getting more things with the Sport Chief, more features that may or may not be important to you. Um, so I'm trying to do this. Uh, I'm trying to compare this as without any brand loyalty at all. Again, I really enjoy both bikes. Both bikes are are very well made, and and that's why they're as desirable as they are. You know, as they should be. So. This is, we're just going to cut it off here. This is the end of part one. Part two, I test drive the next Indian, uh, it was the Indian Pursuit. So if you're interested in that, that video is coming up next. And if you like videos like this and you want to see more videos like this, you guys know what to do. Like and